everyone welcome to this update video i really hope you're doing great and as you would have seen from the title the thumbnail we've had our first disturbance in the north atlantic of 2024 so yesterday in the evening the national hurricane center highlighted an area of low pressure uh, that was being watched you know but uh, eventually we're not seeing anything really become of it because it is battling those strong upper level winds which is an inhibiting factor when it comes on to development but i actually think that this system may have been a depression yesterday and i'm going to be explaining why now and then we're going to get into the weather update for today as well as that chance of flooding that's still around for parts of the northern caribbean now uh, just before i delve straight into it this is the question of the day not a very hard one but it is what is the wind speed threshold for a hurricane or in other words, what's the minimum wind speed uh, for a tropical cyclone to be considered a hurricane? Save your answer and you'll know if you're correct later in the video. Now, this is what the satellite was looking like yesterday. We can see that uh, counterclockwise or that anti-cyclonic rotation of that system. But look at that blob right there. Now, that's all the convection that was in association with it. However, uh, as I mentioned, it was battling that wind shear. So as a result, uh, if you look closely, notice that all of these colors you'll see, they aren't wrapping around the system. Uh, it's not moving. Uh, it wasn't moving in that counterclockwise direction because of those upper level winds coming in from the west basically displacing all of this convection and cutting off the thunderstorms that notice that uh, you are seeing those white dots and they just gradually dissipated that's the work of the wind shear so wind shear is an inhibiting factor when it comes on to tropical cyclone development but uh, even looking at the wind map yesterday the system was actually producing wind that uh, would be in tropical depression category so it's not a complete tropical system i mean it had that classic asymmetrical look but it was sustaining winds within tropical depression category so because of that and just how it looked at that well-defined center i really think that it was maybe a subtropical depression uh in terms of being a subtropical storm i don't think it was uh, sustaining winds up to 40 miles per hour and i uh, reaching all the other uh requirements or the threshold to be considered a subtropical storm but i definitely think it may have been a subtropical depression but we'll see if the national hurricane center if they're gonna uh, carry out some sort of assessment with the system and maybe upgrade it at a later date but if that happens then the hurricane season for this year would have been kick-started on april 24th but we'll see what happens in terms of that doesn't uh, it doesn't mean that it was in fact a subtropical depression is just based on what i saw but as i said we'll see nonetheless this is the smoke very thin very light smoke to the fire ahead because guess what the sea surface temperatures are well on their way anomalously warm uh, above average across the entire well majority of the north atlantic and i'm not even focusing on the entirety of the north atlantic just the tropical atlantic where we typically have these tropical waves moving off and headed westward to the caribbean even in the caribbean we're seeing all these yellow and orange shadings indicating above average temperatures so it is very warm and that is definitely going to be exacerbating the effects of the hurricane season because that is what leads to very rapid intensification so a lot is certainly ahead this is just the start of it uh, not necessarily the start of the season but you know we don't typically have disturbances like this in april and the last storm to develop in april was arlene of 2017 so it has been a while since uh, we've had an april storm so let's see as i said if the nhc is going to make any upgrades as it relates to this system but uh it only had a 10 percent chance of actually being something as of now the chance is zero because of the winter it has moved into a much worse environment as it relates to how uh, unfavorable conditions are for development but on that note the african coast offshore has been very active a sign of those tropical waves to come they usually start rolling off in may and you know through the hurricane season every few days a new one moves off the african coast and at least uh 20 percent or, or so of those manage to become tropical cyclones 
But uh, I really think that this year we could see a higher percentage of the tropical waves developing again because of the above average temperatures and wind shear, which is expected to decrease due to La Nina setting in. So El Nino is going away, which usually helps to uh, prevent development and allow a lot more systems to curve out at sea. But La Nina is the contrary. And so uh, here we're looking at these satellite imagery, not a whole lot. However, there's been some thunderstorms in parts of the Northern Caribbean, even in Hispaniola, just as highlighted. So you can let me know what's been happening for you. Other areas, such as in parts of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, there hasn't been much rain around. But as it relates to the region and rainfall activity today, there could be quite a bit of rain in parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Yet again, even sections of Puerto Rico and with a heavy downpour, that can actually trigger flooding if there's a lot of heavy rain. Uh, in a very short amount of time. Some showers will also be around parts of the Virgin Islands, the Lesser Antilles, and uh, potentially near the ABC Isles, although that rainfall chance is pretty low. Heading down to northern South America, Colombia, Venezuela will likely be active, but much of the Guyanas, especially in the north and central parts of the countries, will likely be on the drier side today. Uh, may not be as much rain. And then headed over to Costa Rica, Panama is likely to be active as well with some periods of heavy downpours. Some showers also likely around for parts of Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, and potentially some spots in the Yucatan. Cayman Islands, much not expected. Jamaica, few showers around. Uh, same story for parts of Cuba. And then for the southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, some showers may loiter around while things will be a bit drier in the north. And so guys, that is it in terms of the rain. And there's that dust moving through as well. It may have been very hazy for you, especially the eastern islands, Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, uh, the ABC Islands, even parts of northern South America as well. So that dust has been moving through and uh again if you are experiencing a dense plume remember to take the necessary precautions because it can in fact trigger uh, those allergies it can cause skin eye throat irritation it may trigger respiratory conditions as well so i hope that everyone is doing okay and uh, that is basically what i wanted to share with you in this update video so again we have our first disturbance or we've had our first disturbance of 2024 and there are a lot more to come a lot more to come guys and of course i'm here to keep you posted as always and so now going back to the question that i asked earlier what is the wind speed threshold for a hurricane the answer is 74 miles per hour or if you said 120 kilometers an hour you are most certainly correct so that is the start of category one and then we have cat two three four and five cat five exceeding winds of 157 miles per hour thereabout and so guys i hope that you found this video to be very informative but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i'll respond when i get the chance to do so and remember to always be otherwise.